Well, hello, everybody. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. Hopefully the video and uh, uh, audio is coming in clearer on this video. I used my iPhone uh, for the video um, instead of my camera or um, any of my multiple web cameras. Um, I, I've been using 1080p uh, webcams and I know people weren't very happy with it. I'm using a webcam now, but I'm not showing any shoes. This is just the introduction. And I do have a, a professional now microphone, uh, which hopefully will help. Um, as we uh, continue to build the channel out over the year, um, I have made investments, uh, but my software, um, I'm still using iMovie. So that is preventing me from uploading um, really high quality video. So I am uh, in the market looking for something better. So hopefully that will help. But today uh, we're really here to talk about um, the best of 2020. And so I've got a review of my acquisitions and a quick look at uh, what we're doing in order to uh, um, really add, uh, um, you know, what are the best shoes that I bought this year and uh, that we've reviewed together. So uh, look forward to your comments on it. Please let me know what uh, you think. And uh, here we go. Welcome to Wisconsin Shoe Guy. Here we do unboxing videos, we discuss general shoe knowledge, we do worth the price videos as shoe reviews, and we will do shoe battles uh, comparing shoe to shoe so that you can understand the differences. I also speak to experts in the field. Check out my playlists to see all my videos. 2020 has been a busy year. I've bought a fair amount of shoes, more than I've ever thought possible. And I've really gotten into understanding the differences and really expanded my knowledge in the top tiers of shoes. And here, we're going to talk about what the best ones were. Welcome, this is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and today we're going to be doing the best of series. It's hard to narrow down um, you know, what, what are the best of different things? And, uh, you know, there are a lot of really good shoes that were bought in 2020 that we want to make sure that we showcase, but at the same time, we, I really don't want to make it boring. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm going to, uh, do a series of, uh, best ofs, really trying to narrow it down into the best acquisitions of 2020 overall. And so we're going to start with a, a number of different categories. The first one we're going to start with is best medallion. And this is uh, not necessarily something that you have a choice when you buy the shoe. Um, if you buy an MTO, then you get to choose the medallion. And two of these are actually ones that I chose. Uh, the other one is just the medallion that came stock with the shoe um, that uh, I really happen to like uh, as much as all the ones that I chose. So that's how we're going to start today. The, uh, the one that uh, came with the shoe is on the Stefano Bemmer. And that's here. And uh, it's just a beautiful medallion. It has this uh, this great feature to it, and uh, really just love the way that uh, that medallion looks. So, uh, going to uh, that's going to be my 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 first option. My second option is this choice from Carmina. That has uh, like these little guitars in it, and. Uh, I just like the way that that uh, looks. By the way, I didn't look at them and think guitars when I when I bought it. That was something that a viewer commented on, and uh, I absolutely um, <laughs> love that, uh, and uh, won't forget. And then this is the last one. This is a Patrio that uh, that I picked up, and uh, I chose this medallion. He actually sent me like a sheet of a bunch of different medallions, and this was one of them. Um, only time I'd ever seen this, and uh, kind of looks like a dandelion. That's the way I look at it, and. Uh, um, I really like it. So, um, if I look at the three, the, uh, the best overall, uh, is going to be the Patrio. I just, uh, I love the way that that looks. So this is going to be the best medallion, uh, that that's there. When it comes to best made to order shoe, um, I had a large selection. I had 14 different made to order options. Uh, all of that were done a little bit different. Um, if you look back at the Adelaide um, battle that I just did, the um, the St. Crispin Adelaide was made to order as well. Um, I talked about choosing the last for it, uh, which is one of the hallmarks uh, of a made to order. 
Uh, but uh, all in all, I, uh, I really decided that uh, the best made to order were represented by these three. Um, now, and, and one of them I didn't choose the last for, which is the, um, the Mirman, uh, which is a shoe that uh, did not come in a hand welted variety. And so I asked them to make it. Um, so this is the, um, it was a 101 596 that I asked to be hand welted and they basically created the model 106 596 um, to create it. Um, and it's in cognac, um, Utah calf, uh, which is uh, exceptionally hard to get and uh, really like the way that this came together. Um, the Norvegies chain stitching that they do at Mirman, uh, really nice. And overall, just a wonderful example of a uh, made to order process as well. So sorry about that. Okay, so now the, um, the next one that I chose uh, is the St. Crispin's. Um, and I chose this in a bison. This is the model 633. Um, I actually had a 360 degree Norvegies um, uh, welt put on this, which is uh, very different. And then one of the things that I really like most about it is that I chose a 10 millimeter sole to be put on it. So a big double sole, like double sole with each sole being full size. And uh, it's just a, a, a beautiful classic example of a um, of a chunky shoe. I did a video on chunky shoes, um, which uh, which is worth checking out in my uh, in my playlist. So just a fantastic shoe. Really love the way the Bison adds a different kind of texture than say a Utah calf or even than a suede. Um, and it's a natural texture, which I like the concept of a lot. Um, but I'm not not into like a um, an alligator or a caiman or something like that where um, you know it's coming from a different uh, type of creature. Um, I know that we we do harvest bison for meat and um, therefore um, we use the leather as an additional byproduct so it fits the bill for me of a uh, of a reason uh, for, for a different type of uh, leather uh, that I like. So uh, really happy with that and one of the things I like most about this is this butt stitch that they did on here, where it is absolutely nearly invisible and yet has such a different texture on the two sides that you can totally tell where it is, like that. All right, and lastly, uh, working with Tom at Sons of Henry, um, I designed a split toe through the October 10th collaboration that is a hand welted combination of suede and smooth leather. And uh, St. Crispin's actually has a version of this that they call the Silent Spectator. And I like that concept because it is just subtle. Um, and depending on the light, you know, you, this can pick up really, really, really big contrast or it can be very subtle contrast. And, and I like that. So um, this is a, a phenomenal shoe, has a lot of really uh, great features, great hand welted design. Uh, very thick leathers, um, and so at the in the end of the day, um, had to be included in one of, in my top three for um, MTOs. At the end of this, the uh, the the best one has got to be the bison. I feel like the bison actually uh, represents to me uh, the great things about MTO. Uh, because uh, the last that I chose really fits the shoe, the welt, the sole, uh, the, the overall concept just came together really well. And then because you're looking at shoemaker artistry, the way they matched the, the leather, in my mind, you know, having the large leather uh, texture on the inside, the small leather texture on the outside, really, um, really set this apart. And uh, while well, probably one of my most bold shoes, if not the most bold shoe, uh, definitely uh, something that uh, I'm super happy with and uh, super happy as a, an MTO and the way it came out from my original vision. So this is a category we're going to call best brogue. And I've included three very, very different styles of brogues and um, all are 
what I would consider to be a full brogue. Uh, on the left, you have the vas, uh, which is Budapest, um, has your, um, your, your beautiful medallion, uh, has your, um, here, which we can see here. It's just, uh, it's just a beautiful shoe. Uh, this patina goes on for miles. <laughs> just really like the way that this one came out. Uh, it's a uh, gorgeous work by Mr. Runmarks on here. Um, just classic style, great hand welted shoe, um, and uh, really very nice. Uh, the next one is is a repeat on my list. This came up for best medallion, and this is the Stefano Bemer. Again, a, just a phenomenal shoe. Great lines. Um, just everything about this shoe oozes quality. And uh, really love that. And then lastly is a very unique shoe, which instead of a wingtip or a cap tail, is a U-cap. Um, and this is an Allen Edmonds University. Uh, very, very excited to have this shoe. Was fortunate to be able to pick up a pair that was um, basically NOS, but it was in a private collection, so an unworn pair. And um, couldn't be happier with the way these are. Um, very, very uh, solid shoe and has lasted uh, very well. Uh, one of the earliest shoes in the season uh, that I picked up, I, I did my introduction video to this at O'Hare, so it was before the pandemic um, got into play. But uh, very happy with these three. I think that they all bring a lot of really good things. If you look at the medallions, obviously I choose the, uh, the Bemer. Um, if you look at the overall style, you have Derby, Oxford, and then you have this really unique U-cap, um, which all brings something a little different. Um, at, at the end of the day, as I look at favorite, um, it's a very, very difficult decision, but I'm gonna have to go with the Bemer on this. Um, it just has a different overall look to it. I think the asymmetry that it provides in the last um, and the way that it really incorporates the medallion with intention. Um, it has a much higher wing uh, than the others do. And um, I just, I like the way that this uh, this came together. Um, I like them all, don't get me wrong. They, they're all fantastic shoes. Uh, but these just stand out a little bit more. Far and away the most difficult of these battles is the best Adelaide. How do you choose uh, between so many just really atrociously nice shoes? And how do you uh, make decisions based on what is the most important? Um, some of my Adelaides I haven't really put into a lot of shoe battles at all. Um, and that includes this here on the on the left. This is the um, St. Crispin uh, model 646. Uh, I really like the way this looks though. This is a really non-traditional Adelaide with just the hand stitching uh, for the U-throat and the uh, cap toe uh, and the heels. I, I would say that this is uh, like a hole cut um, that's just brogued. Um, this is just this hand stitch. So it's kind of like a faux Adelaide to begin with, uh, but we're gonna count it. We're gonna leave it in the, uh, in the mix. Uh, when I when I chose this particular makeup, I actually had the B chisel last used, which has this really, really aggressive last on it. And I really like the way that this came out. Um, totally different than any of the other um, ones that were on the site. And, and look, and even the, the model for this particular shoe uh, really changed it a lot. Um, I also like the way that the uh, Norvegese welt in a contrast stitch came out. I think that that, uh, that came out really, really well. Um, leave it to St. Crispens to, uh, to take your concept and to make it better. Um, and that's just a great example of them doing that. So that is entry number one. Entry number two is the, the mother or father of all Adelaides, which is the George Cleverly Adam. Um, really like this shoe. Um, I like the last. I like the way it has the, the great rises on the front of the toe. Uh, this Adelaide has a medallion on it which I think is nice. Uh, a typical um, Crockett and Jones medallion, um, but a, uh, which is like the fountain medallion, but uh, do love it. Feel like this uh, represents the, uh, the, the proportions of an Adelaide uh, for perhaps the best with your standard U. 
um, and so forth. So very happy with this. It also has um, peaks on the back, which I, which I like as well. And then last, this is the Gaziano and Gerling St. James II. Um, also has the peaks, uh, has an elongated toe, and has a different type of chisel last. I call it a soft chisel. This is the TG73 last. And I'm going to say that this is a just a softer shoe overall than the Cleverly, and really than, than almost all of the other shoes. It just, um, it's much wider at the base of the U throat, um, and it has a uh, more subdued feel to it overall, um, which gets more into the subtlety of the Adelaide uh, versus the aggressive nature of this one, or the traditional nature of this one. And the winner? After a lot of thought, um, I decided to go with Subtle. I feel like the Gaziano and Gerling really does a better job of creating a new vision for an Adelaide, and um, just overall is, is a wonderful shoe. So I'm gonna call this Best Adelaide of 2020, um, and uh, just a, a super, super exciting addition to the collection overall. So let's talk about split toes. It reminds me of a salt and pepper song. As I as I look at uh, what I chose here, I actually chose um, two um, to, to showcase four instead of top three for this. Um, and I, I really feel like the uh, the reason that I did that is because of the type of split toe and apron design that these have uh, is really so different. And um, I feel like that's uh, that's important in my decision making. I couldn't really. Uh, choose one over the other because they are so different. Uh, but these are the best of the category uh, within these shoes. Um, let's start with the Bontoni. This is a um, a great Norvigi stitching. It has this saddle looking thing here in it. it it's a suede split toe, which as you know, I have a lot of suede split toes that I really like. Um, it has the apron that has the, the pie crust on it, but the pie crust is um, really very subtle in the way that they do that. Um, almost too subtle. I almost don't even see the pie crust on it. Um, it has the, um, showing toe, so it's not reversed. It's, it's a, it's a three-dimensional toe. Um, and the apron is just, uh, really classic, um, you know, in the way that they stitch it, almost like that there's that, uh, um, tube underneath it. Um, so really, really happy with the way this came out. Really happy with the overall weight to the shoe. Uh, the way that it incorporates the um, the, the beautiful Commando sole um, in the shoe itself, uh, just really first rate. So very happy with this one. The, the next on here is Apollo Scafora. And this is my first um, interaction with uh, Positano Calf. And really like the way that the shoe is aging. It has a lot of character, a lot of uh, natural patina going on, as well as the patina that they put on at the factory. Um, you know, Paolo Scafora has these beautiful soles, um, but they just do such an exceptional job everywhere in this shoe. It's very difficult to have any kind of battle with this type of shoe where I don't include this on here. Um, it has the second top line, uh, but that second top line is in a totally different way than it is on a lot of the other models and uh, really do like that. And so um, just needed to, uh, needed to showcase this one. Really feel like it's a, an exceptional example of um, way to do it. Now, the stitch on the apron, the long toe, um, that is uh, relatively unique uh, in my collection and I uh, really do like it. The uh, the work that they do here is just phenomenal. You know, couldn't be happier with that. So from a quality standpoint, from an art artistry standpoint, uh, from a variety of the collection standpoint, uh, definitely a shoe that needed to uh, needed mention. Now, the next shoe is an interesting one. This is an uh, MTO uh, from Acme. And, you know, Acme is, is new. They're the new kid on the block, and they just do exceptionally artful shoes. I chose to have a traditional derby here instead of the, uh, the one piece. Um, and, uh, you know, the density here. This is as close to bespoke quality as I've, I've ever seen, um, personally. Um, they have this uh, the beautiful Italian leather soles. Um, they just did a great job. The Norvigi stitching 
is absolutely second to none. It's just super tight, super clean. Um, and then of course this apron, very, very good, traditional, beautiful apron with a great butt stitch toe, a little bit of visibility, but not much. Love the way that come together. And again, this is another combination where they're taking the hatch grain pattern and they're pulling it together throughout the shoe. And uh, really, really like the way that that turned out. Uh, so Acme, um, I have to admit, it, it's maybe one of my favorite shoes ever. Okay. And then lastly, we have the Gaziano and Girling. Now, what's interesting is Gaziano and Girling has a totally different apron on here. They have almost a three-dimensional reverse um, split on the toe. And of course, this is a boot, so um, has a different methodology for bringing the um, the, the full um, texture together. Um, it's a uh, one piece on the uh, on, on across the shoe um, from, from here to here, so it's not your traditional derby. And uh, just love the way that this shape and this pattern came out. So very, very happy with this. As I look at the four and I have to choose down to one, uh, the one I'm most excited about really uh, is this. Um, you know, three of the four are Norvegi stitched, three of the four are hand welted, uh, but this really brings the best of an MTO shoe, of a, uh, of a hand welted shoe and, and a split toe uh, that I've seen. Um, and so very, very happy with this shoe and uh, super excited to add it to the collection and rotation as we go. So now we have the category of best long wing. Now, I separated the long wing brogues from the regular brogues because I feel like long wings have a different place in my collection. Now, this is a personal thing. This isn't a, a standard thing. But I, uh, I initially had nothing but long wings as part of my collection. Didn't really like the look of other wing tips. And uh, I, I certainly changed. Now, if you look at my collection in 2020, I seem to have gotten away from the long wing and really focused in on the um, split toe and Adelaide um, and hole cut. And I, I think that part of that was because long wings are hard to find. Um, a lot of brands just don't do a good long wing. And so uh, because of that, uh, we have a, uh, a kind of a, a change here where I only, I think, had four or five. Uh, but I, I pulled together these three as, 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 as the best. And let me explain why. You know, as you look at the, uh, first of all, two of them are Shell Cordovan, which I love. I love, love, love uh, the long wing in Shell Cordovan. Uh, the one on the left here, this is a um, Shell Cordovan made by Barker for Edward and James. Um, and you can see it has this, uh, this Barker premium sole that has the uh, laser etched story of Barker on it. Um, and this is a, uh, you can see a little bit of a bloom starting there. Uh, but you, this is a, um, an English one. It has the seam here. Um, it has just beautiful lines. Um, it, it, it is a symmetrical shoe, but the overall look to it, and a look at that medallion is just really epic. That is a very, very different medallion uh, for, for one of these. It's, a, it's just a really beautiful shoe. Uh, and then as we look at the, uh, the others, I have a more traditional, this is an Allen Edmonds with a fleur-de-lis medallion. This is a McGregor on the 65 last. Just a beautiful shoe, um, very, very standard, but also typical American gunboat. Love the way it looks. And then I have a Meerman, which is in cognac shell, which is why I bought it. Um, and you can see here, this is, you know, you, you have a different piece here for the, for the vamp and tongue than you do for the rest. There's a lot of different pieces to it that are that are interesting and classically Meerman. Um, the detail work, of course, the sole work, um, all of that is uh, is classic and uh, and very well executed for Meerman. Um, and uh, you know, it does have some stains and stuff like that 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 I also you know could probably deal do with a little more. But um, as I look at the three, the one that really strikes out as being the best example of a long wing, uh, probably best medallion, best overall lines, um, are, is really gonna wind up being the Barker here. 
Um, this is uh, made from an English shell cordovan, which is no longer available. The tannery went under. And I'm um, just really happy with the way this particular shoe turned out. Now, as my shell cordovan shoes go, this is also by far the stiffest shoe I own. Uh, so it requires a lot more break-in, uh, which of course with my rotation, I haven't been able to devote to it. Um, so that's gonna be one of my challenges of the first quarter here, is to really get the shoe broken in so that I can uh, really come back and say how it's doing after a given amount of time. But uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for tuning in. So, plain toe bluchers. And I have an exception to make because I included uh, this beautiful John Lobb Drift in here as well. So I'm changing the category from plain toe bluecher to plain toe derby. Um, so I have the uh, Allen Edmonds leads, uh, which are here. Um, I have the Alden equivalent um, here. And then I have these John Lobb um, in this rosewood grain um, um, here as well. So what makes the best plain toe shoe? Uh, you know, you can look at it in a lot of different ways. Um, some of it having to do with a traditional shape. Um, you know, these are, these are all derbies. Um, some having to do with the, um, uh, the material. Um, some having to do with, uh, just the execution on the shoe itself. Um, you know, from an execution standpoint, um, uh, from an overall shape standpoint, it's really not fair to compare. Um, you know, the John Lobb is an asymmetric, uh, has a beautiful last, um, has this beautiful grain here that really is not, uh, it's just not, it's not comparable to anything else that's out there. Um, just a just a gorgeous shoe. Um, the detailing that they do is uh, really second to none and really, <laughs> candidly, not fair to compare a John Lobb to an Allen Edmonds or to an Alden, right? But if we look at it in terms of, okay, this is a plain toe shoe. How does it fit into the plain toe collection strategy? Uh, what I was looking for when I, I, I acquired it, um, you know, the, the leads um, from Allen Edmonds um, is just such a phenomenal shoe. Um, just has so much that it brings to offer. Uh, this color green is, is just, uh, to die for. Um, you know, I, I couldn't look for a nicer color uh, in this style and really, really do appreciate that. The very traditional uh, for the Alden um, is also there and, and, and they execute a fine shoe. Uh, just classic Alden uh, quality. Um, this has had a lot of sun, um, so it's uh, um, has gotten a, a lot more um, faded um, than any of the others, but um, really do like the way um, these three compared to each other. Um, if I'm looking at brightness and boldness, I have to go with the Allen Edmonds. Uh, you just can't uh, approach green. Um, you know, green uh, uh, is just a, is a great color. Um, very, very uh, uh, well, well thought through. And uh, um, it, I mean, this is like a British racing green. It is just a great shoe to have. Uh, from a overall, last an impression i can't get away from the john lob the, the john lob is a phenomenal shoe and just a, a very very high quality derby but again as i look at plain toe derbies how i want it to compare into the rest of my collection how does it fit um i've got to go with um i've got to go with the bold color um i've got to go with the traditional choice and that is the allen edmonds so uh that is my thought allen edmonds wins So, best hole cut. You know, as you look at things like best hole cut, the question comes down to, you know, is it really about the best fit? Is it about the best look? Is it about the best look overall? And there's so many things that you can look at when it comes to hole cut, but at the end of the day, in my mind, it really comes down to last. And the last of these three shoes is very, very different. Um, you have your prototypical sharp Italian style here with your Enzo Bonafe, uh, which is a has a beautiful medallion. This could have been in the medallion finalists. Um, has a, uh, just a beautiful patina. And this is a patina that I had Mr. Renworks put on after. Um, so this is not, did not come with the shoe, but clearly a big part of the shoe as I have it. 
And um, you know, you look at the, the detail work, the, the way that this came together, but really the last, the rises on the side, kind of the softness, kind of like you had with the Gaziano and Gerling, uh, but also a, uh, a sharpness to it, which I really love. So you've got that. Then you have your prototypical English hole cut in the Crockett and Jones hand grade, which this is the Weymouth. Just a beautiful, beautiful shoe. Um, has great lines, has great feel to it. And, um, you know, everything typical of a hole cut. And uh, the medallion is uh, the fountain medallion. And, uh, you know, I really like the way it came out. It's just, a, it's a beautiful, it, it's a gorgeous shoe, right? And I'm um, very happy with it. And then we get something different. And this is um, by Yosal, um, and this is a uh, part of their prestige line, which was by Antonio Macariello. And this is just a gorgeous shoe. You know, you look at the line here, this is the Hawksbill last. It has just rounded edges everywhere you'd want them. It has sharp rises, but they're subtle. So subtle sharpness. And I know that that's a complete oxymoron, but I just love the way that this came together. Um, the way that it incorporated a, um, an asymmetric view into a shoe and um, really pulls it off. I have to say, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm very much in love with the shoe. Now he also did this hand patina of a museum calf in a very light, but dark enough color, right? And what do I mean by that? I mean, I can wear this with different colors and don't feel like it's overly light, but it's also light enough to wear with, you know, uh, light, light colors um, and uh, feel like it's not overly dark. So it's, it's just a really good in-between color uh, that goes with everything. And this hand museum calf is just absolutely gorgeous. I, I love the way that this came out. So from my uh, overall perspective, um, you know, as it comes down to last shape, um, I'm going to have to go with the, uh, with the Yosal here, the St. Martin. I just love the way that this came out. I think Antonio did a phenomenal job in the design of the shoe and I'm just super happy uh, that it's part of my collection. And so here we have it, the top 10. So we looked at the best Adelaide being the, uh, the Gaziano and Gerling St. James, the best medallion being on the Patrio, the best hole cut being on the Yosal by Macariello, the best uh, brogue being the Bemer, the best MTO being uh, the St. Crispin and Bison, the best long wing being the uh, long wing here, the English long wing in Shell Cordovan by Barker for Edward and James. The best split toe being this gorgeous hatch grain split toe from Acme. The best plain toe blucher coming from Alan Edmonds. And then I added two, okay? I added my favorite Oxford overall, uh, which uh, was in the um, Adelaide battle, which is the St. Crispin Adelaide. Uh, overall, uh, it doesn't really fit as well into the Adelaide category or the whole cut category, uh, but I, I believe it deserves a second mention. It is a beautiful, beautiful shoe. Uh, also one of my, my coolest MTOs, right? So happy with that. And then I added back in the John Lobb. And I added the John Lobb really because as, as much as I love the texture, of the bison, this is probably the best texture of any of my shoes that are in calf. Right? So I just, I really like it. And I think the texture goes really well with a plain tail. Uh, it just, uh, it sets it off in a very subtle way. It's also my only two eyelet derby. And so um, we're gonna put that in there as my favorite derby. Uh, so favorite derby uh, of 2020, favorite Oxford of 2020, and then the winners of the eight categories. So how do we choose? How do we narrow it down? 
Well, we could look at uh, price paid, but that would be awfully boring, wouldn't it? We can look at how much handwork is done, how much detail is done. Um, that, would, that would be a very valid way of looking at it. That would be something that we could look at and say, you know, if we're going to do that, then clearly the winner is going to be either St. Crispin's, Acme, or um, Stefano Bemmer. Okay? Uh, it's not that the John Lobb doesn't have the level of detail, nor the Meccariello, uh, but they're not the same degree of handwork. This is not a Meccariello um, hand, um, handmade. It's not part of the Orem line. It, it's just not the same level. So as, as we look at this and as we, as we really define it down, I think it has to be um, just overall, what is my favorite? What, what is the shoe that of all of these shoes that if I'm wearing a, just a standard blue suit, what am I gonna grab? And of all of these shoes, and this is hard, I would go for the Acme. And I would go for the Acme twice in a row because the Acme is a beautiful, beautiful shoe. Um, it has a beautiful fiddleback waist, um, which everybody knows who watches the channel is very important to me. Um, it, the level of detail on this is just sublime. And that's not a word that I throw out there a lot. You know, look at this welt. That is next level. Look at this stitching. That is next level. You know, if I look at the, 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 the amount of, of distance here, as, as I look at this out, I mean, anything I do with the shoe battle for this shoe, it will win. It is just so well executed. It is so sublime. Uh, it's just a really phenomenal shoe. Now, that's not to take anything away from St. Crispin, from Gaziano and Gerling, from Bemmer, from Meccariello, from Patria. They, they did a great job executing this shoe. Uh, from Barker, from Allen Edmonds, they, they all do their own type of quality and their own type of artistry on their shoes. Lob is a fantastic example of a well-executed shoe. But Acme, at the end of the day, is just, this is just at another level. And, and it pains me because I would have thought that my St. Crispins would have, have given me that, that, that feel. And they have until I had these. Okay. So, um, so, so that's, that's where it is right now. That is my favorite of 2020. Um, <laughs> ask me again in, in six months and, and which shoe I've worn more. We'll, we'll have to see, but, uh, you guys can always check out my Instagram and, and see for yourselves. So, uh, just a very short look at this. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you disagree. Uh, and uh, happy to uh, happy to hear your thoughts on it. Thanks. So it wouldn't be a year-end video for 2020 if it didn't have something to do with COVID. And so this epilogue is really about masks. And what are you doing for masks for when you go out in a suit? And this is uh, one of my casual masks. I got this from Dearborn Denim. Uh, I like having masks that don't go over the ears, but that go around the head. And real happy with this. Um, but let's face it, this is not a good mask for wearing with a suit. So what are some options that you have? So um, the first thing that I did was I found some, uh, some ones that go over the head um, made out of really, really fine materials, like suit materials. Um, this is from Kirby Allison in, in a nice black watch pattern. And I like to fold them this way uh, to keep them. Obviously, you need to be able to wash your masks. That's something I think we all learned <laughs> the hard way. Um, I have another pattern here in these as well. Now, this is a really nice cashmere blend, and uh, it's a super soft. Great, uh, great examples, also from Kirby Allison. Um, and uh, I think these go really well with the suit. So if I'm wearing a windowpane suit or I'm wearing a plaid suit, I can get away with these. If I'm wearing a, a navy suit or a uh, black suit, 
uh, I can get away with the uh, black watch. I think it goes really, really well. Now, I picked up some others just for uh, variety. Um, you know, sometimes you need to be able to change your mask in the middle of the day and you need to have some options. And so I found a, uh, a set that I got from the Suited Racer. Um, this is uh, just a nice gray uh, linen and wool. Then I have here a charcoal, same. Um, I got it in olive and in a navy. So this is what I'll do, right? Um, as, as, I, as we start to travel again, we will probably still need to wear masks for quite some time. And uh, even, even if we're uh, inoculated, for, it sounds like. So if, uh, if that's what the case is, um, I will have all six of these masks with me on my trips and I will try to, uh, you know, change them out a couple times a day uh, just to keep them fresh, um, you know, because you can't, uh, especially when you're traveling, you can't brush your teeth uh, nearly as often as you'd like to. So uh, just something to, uh, to keep in mind for everyone out there and uh, to put a little bit of a 2020 or 2020 take on this year in review because this is something we're all learning to live with. Thanks all.